My name is Riley and I'm an account manager here at DAPRC in the Portsmouth office. Today I'll be showing you how to build this brand tracker for HTM shoes. This retailer conducts quarterly studies to measure their brand across all markets. The brand manager for each market tracks four KPIs that are most important to their organization. HTM uses this simple tracker to gauge how strong their brand is compared to their closest competitors and where they need to put attention to further strengthen their brand. The first page of the dashboard is a landing page showing a brand funnel. It is a very straightforward funnel which shows the four most important KPIs identified by HTM Shoes. I'm going to start off by showing our templates library. Our templates library stores objects, groups of objects, slides, and even reports to be reused in other projects. As a user, you create an object once and when saved as a template, all settings are saved along with it. This allows for an easier and more efficient report setup. To insert a template into this project, I'll just click the templates library icon. Here you will find your templates categorized into different folders. To insert a template, you'll just click the desired template, in this case the brand funnel image, and click import. You can also choose to insert the template into the same position on the slide as it was originally saved. So I will insert this image. And once this is added to the slide, since all settings and formatting is saved, all I need to do is add the variables. So now I want to go into my awareness table and make sure that I have the awareness variable assigned to it. So I will go into my table settings. And with templates, you are brought to what we call our wizard, which is a window showing only data related settings. So variables, filters, time periods, since all of our other settings are pre-saved when the template is created. You can leave the wizard to see the full availability of settings, where you can go through layout and other formatting options. But with this template, I just want to assign my variable. So I'll go back to my wizard, select HTM Shoes Funnel Awareness, and the group I'm looking at are those who are aware of the brand. So when I click Save, the data will populate. Now I'm just going to go through the same steps for the other three KPIs. The tables on the left will show the conversion rate between the metrics we just added. For example, in this first table, I want to show the conversion rate between awareness and consideration. To show this, I want to go into the table settings and apply the associated variables for awareness and consideration. So first I will select my funnel awareness variable and also make sure my consideration is selected. And here I will select the answer alternatives that I showed in my first tables, those groups that are aware and will consider. Now that the variables are assigned, I need to turn on my conversion rate. So in this example, I'll go to awareness and enable my bench benchmark. So I want to compare against my rows since that's where my two variables exist. And the benchmark object will be my question since I am comparing awareness against consideration. And I want to make sure that my calculation is running the conversion rate. So when I click save, you'll see the conversion rate to be 52%. This means 52% of respondents who are aware of HTM shoes would consider purchasing it as well. Now I'll just do the same couple of steps for the next two tables. I'm now going to add some line charts that will show the same KPIs but trended against HTM and the four main competitors. I'm going back to my templates library 
and this time I will insert a line chart. In my awareness line chart, I will reassign the awareness variables, not only for HTM, but for the competitors as well. So in my wizard, I will select HTM awareness along with the competitors, and I'll be looking at the same group, those that are aware of the brands. The intervals that we will trend by, in this case quarters, are pre-saved in the template, but you can see my time selection here and change it as well. When I click save, you'll see the chart populate. To add my three other KPIs in line charts, I could reinsert the line charts from the, tape from the template library, or another efficient way I want to demonstrate is just copy and pasting the line chart And now all I need to do is reassign the variables. So instead of awareness, I now want to look at consideration. My last step here is to add a legend identifying the brands being shown in the line charts. And I have this legend saved in my templates library. Finally, I'll just finish this slide up by adding my headlines and subheadlines at the top. And I'm also going to add some dynamic text, which will display my filter options that I have selected. So when I click update here, you'll see my dynamic text update to show UK as my filter selection. I will finish up this page by adding lines going from each metric in the brand funnel to the respective graph. Our second slide is set up to show spontaneous brand awareness of HTM versus the main competitors. For this slide, I'm going to insert a line chart from the templates library. And once added, all I need to do is go into the chart settings and add my variables. I am still looking at awareness in the same group of those that are aware of the brands. In this line chart, the data is also being trended across quarters. This setting is saved through the template, but I can review it under my time periods and intervals, or also through all settings under time selections. So when I click save, the chart will populate, and you will see that I have SIG testing built into this template. I can go back to my chart settings and review the settings of the SIG test, which is under analysis. So you can see that I am testing between my intervals, which lives on my axis. So I will be testing between axis groups. We are testing between all items and we are comparing against the previous data point. So in this case, that is the previous quarter. Here you can choose to set the significance level 
and how you want to visualize the results. All of this is saved in the template, but we have the ability to make any changes at any time. Now I need to insert a legend, so this is clear to users which, e which line is representing which brand. And my final step is to fill out the headline and subheadline. The third side of the dashboard will represent brand image. This page will compare the HTM brand against the two main competitors across multiple product attributes. In this slide, I can actually go into my templates library and import the entire slide. Now that I have all of the formatting and settings of the slide imported, I'm going to go into my first chart settings and I'm going to add the variables behind it. In this example, since I will be comparing product attributes across multiple brands, I'm actually going to be using more than one series. I'm going to be using three, which you can see at the top of the screen here. My first series will represent HTM. The second series will represent simply must have and the third will represent cuddle. In my first series, I'm going to add the product attributes specific to HTM. In the next two series, I'm going to go through the same process of adding the product attributes specific to Simply Must Have and Cuddle, respectively. Similar to the previous slide, this chart is set up to show the brand image across quarters and has SIG testing built in. On this slide, I also want to include the deviations to the previous wave, in this case to the previous quarter. In each of these tables to the right, I'm going to include the same variables that are shown in this line chart and set them up so that it displays the unit change compared to the previous quarter. So starting off with the HTM table, I'll go into the chart settings and include the same product attributes specific to this brand. Now I'm going to go to all settings to ensure that the deviation is set up correctly. I set this up under analysis. And since I'm comparing against quarters, which currently exists in my columns, I'm going to make sure that my dimension is set to columns. My benchmark object is quarters. And since I want to measure unit change, my calculation type will be units. And my comparison point will be the previous data point since I'm comparing against the previous quarter. And when I click save, you'll see the unit change from the previous quarter for HTM. Now we'll just follow the same process for the next two tables for Cuddle Boots and Simply Must Have. And now my brand image slide is complete.
In this final slide of the dashboard, we are going to be showing customer relationship. Measuring and managing the customer experience is becoming more and more important for top brands, including HTM Shoes. In this slide, we will show specifically how strong the relationship between HTM and their customers is compared to the main competitors. I'm going to start off by inserting a stacked bar chart to be able to show the breakdown of the customer groups for each brand. So I will go into the chart settings and be sure to select all of the brands I want to look at, including HTM Shoes and their competitors. The answer alternatives that I select will represent the breakdown of customer groups, friends, strangers, and enemies. Friends are the customers who like the brand and are loyal. Strangers know of the brand, but don't have a relationship with the brand. And lastly, enemies are those who would never buy the brand. In this chart, I also want to set the sort order to reflect value descending specific to the red section, which will represent friends. So I'm going to leave the wizard and go to all settings. And you can see below my chart preview that I have the option to sort by value descending. And when I refresh, I have the option to sort on friend. So now the brands are sorted in descending order based on the value of the red section. Now I just want to add a legend using the text box feature to provide clarity for users as to what section of the stacked bar chart represents what. Now that this chart is complete, you can see that HTM has the largest share of friends, 52% of their clients are strangers, and only 4% fall into the enemies group. The second aspect of this slide is going to show the deviation of share of friends to the previous wave, and in this case that will be the previous quarter. In the templates library, I have a pre-saved chart that I want to use to display deviations. Now that I have this chart inserted, I will go into the chart settings and into the wizard. And I still want to look at all of my brands. And this time I only want to look at friends. Since I'm going to be looking at the difference of the share of friends. So I have my brand selected, my answer alternative selected, and now just to double check that my deviation is set up correctly, I'll go to all settings and analysis. And you can see that I have my quarters in the legend. So my dimension is set to legend. My object is quarters. And since I'm just looking at unit change, my calculation is units and I'll be comparing against the, the previous data point. So now I just want to save so that my first chart gets an ID. And once my chart has an ID, I'll be able to sort my deviation chart based on the order of this chart. So the ID is 952. And in all settings, you see I have the option to sort on another chart. So I'll select 952 and save. And this makes sure that these deviations align with the brands 
and this will react dynamically to filters and can reorder and the relationship will stay the same. Now I just want to add another legend for my deviation chart and I'll do that the same way as I made my first legend through the text box. The last feature that I want to walk through today is our cross table tool. The cross table tool is perfect for the experienced analyst who wants to further slice and dice the data. So I can set the cross table tool up very quick by just selecting these question blocks that were set up in the back end. And once these are added, all of the associated variables will add as well. So I can choose which variables I want to run and compare against. So I can choose to run country and look at my customer relationship variables and I can run this. I can also take it a step further by adding filters so if I only wanted to look at 2015 data and then I can also choose to adjust my calculations so if I only want to show the percent share and then I can generate this. A great feature included in our cross table tool is the ability to save templates. So I can save this template and if I set it as a default template, this will be the first table to load along with all of the settings and the filter selections that I made when a user logs in. They won't need to make the selections again, it will load by default. To learn more about Dapracy Pro and how it supports the unique needs of your business, please feel free to start a conversation with us today. Thank you.